Why did you refuse to be the Ascals head coach countless times? I've been there, done that. Too much politics, like I said. Uh, like I posted one time a few days ago, coaching is a thankless job. With what's happening with Michael Weiss, uh, we talked about it already before, uh, personally, one-on-one, -on -one, and I said, it happens. And I said, you should know that because you've worked also somewhere in other countries as well. Uh, there's no such thing as a permanent job in coaching, in any sport. <laughs> yeah. Hello folks, welcome back to another episode of Hands On. I believe this is the fifth of the se second season and we're happy to do this uh, once again. Um, we have sent away our, our players, they're in the Maldives already, so we're looking forward to it. Uh, if perfect, you're watching this, perfect timing, you always have perfect timing. What do you mean? Today's the first game. <laughs> yeah, it is, Tonight. it is. Um, if you're watching this though, or if you're listening to it, whichever way uh, that you uh, like to listen to the show, um, it, you're going to get this on a Thursday, so the Philippines will have played already their first game. They will and will be, be getting, on their second game. They'll be getting ready for their second game. Uh, but at this point in time, this is a Tuesday when we're recording this, so we're going to get an opportunity to talk about the lineup that we sent over there to Maldives. There's 24 players that have, have, have uh, made the trip. 15 of those players play in the United Football League. And we have on the show today um, the coach that is on track to win the league in the United Football League with four games or five games. Oh, five games remaining. Uh, they got a, a pretty good, sizable advantage. There'll be one team that's going to cut them down. Man. <laughs> give them a hard time. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. We have Coach uh, Lee Manson on the program today, head coach of Global, uh, still president of uh, Total Football Nike or mm -hmm. Nike Total Football, which was yeah. <laughs> well, just Total Football. Yes. Total Football. Was it Lee Manson, the uh, mass murderer or something? Uh, <laughs> was, it, uh, was it a rocker or was it similar? Similar, similar name, the Manson. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But, but, but no, no relation. No relation. No that's relation. good. That's good to hear. That's why there's a few here in the small room. So. <laughs> Uh, so Coach Lee here took, uh, took over for the hot seat in Global in January. Uh, had a difficult start mm -hmm. um, with Global. Took a 4-0 uh, loss against Loyola Morocco Sparks to start off uh, his tenure but, there. Yeah. But, Thank has you for the reminder. but has recovered. <laughs> I think it's important to, to, to talk about the starting point because yeah. where you are right now is, is, is incredible. I think I, I've looked at your um, managerial statistics and I think it's like, what, one loss, two draws. Um, 12 wins at well at least at that point in time so it, the the record is great with global Thank you. Uh, a bit of a rough start but uh yeah it's looking good right now um we will talk a little bit more about um you know his job with global and how things are are panning out over there but let's start with the rundown first we always do that on uh, on the program so we're going to take a look at some of the things that have been going on in the latest hey, thoughts lee just come in right. yeah well first of all i'd i'd like to thank you guys for <laughs> giving me an opportunity to share my thoughts on football. Absolutely. It's not we're just a, about football, a, man, about you. We're a world community, so, well, I think the football's the interesting part. <laughs> no, I don't think so. No. <laughs> People know this is a football show, but what they want to know, I think, is well about yeah, personal, you know. For sure. Well, personal I'm, life, how many kids you've got on Emirate. Uh, <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get there. So the Challenge Cup has begun. It started last night, um, and uh, there have been a couple of games already. Palestine beat Kyrgyzstan. I hope I'm, I'm pronouncing that correctly. 1-0. One, one um, the other game that was played, hosts Maldives were playing against Myanmar, Myanmar. Um, and that game ended 3-2 in favor of Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Bit of a surprise, thought Maldives would do uh, a little better in, in their opening game. Uh, but yeah, the squad that we've sent over there uh, to the Maldives, like I said, 15 of those players from the United Football League. Um, I'm just going to rattle off the names, all right? We've got Neil Etheridge, Robert Gear. Daisuke Sato, who uh, Coach Lee is very uh, familiar with. Anton Del Rosario is there. Um, Juan Iguirado, Jason De Jong, James Young Husband, Dennis Cagara, Phil Young Husband, Patrick Reichelt, uh, Ruben Doctora Jr., uh, Carlos De Morga, Roland Mueller, Patrick Dato, Stefan Schrock, Christopher Greatwich, Jerry Lucena, OJ Porteria, or Porteria. Porteria. <laughs> we have Martin Stoib Stoible. Stoibl. I don't know how they say it. Stubble. No, I'm not. We're just murdering his name. He's he. I've heard like three different ways to pronounce it. <laughs> Paul like Mulders. Porter, yeah, Porter. Yeah. Simone Rota is there. Uh, Simon Greatwich, Kenshiro Daniels, and Amani Aguinaldo. Quite a few guys are are enjoying their debut yeah. in the Challenge Cup. Mm -hmm. um, Amani Aguinaldo, Kenshiro, uh, Simone Rota, uh, Martin, Patrick Dato, Ruben Doctora Jr., and Daisuke Sato. 
Uh, some of these guys, very young, like Daisuke Sato and Amani Aguinaldo, you know them very well, yeah. Coach Lee. Um, 19, 18 years old? How yeah. old are these guys? Um, it's incredible that they're getting this opportunity. Sato, I think, is 19. 19, yeah. Right, and Sato's just recently getting just, integrated yes. into uh, the top flight. Actually, he hasn't been in the Philippines six months yet, I don't think so. No, not at all. Not he, yet, joined, he, joined, he joined us um, in the first transfer window. That's right, yeah. That's March then. March. Yeah. Yeah, and as you can see, the guys are having a good time over there in Maldives. They're in good spirits. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, Daisu Kisato and Amani Aguinaldo. Are you surprised at all that they're in the lineup? Um, to be honest, no, because when Thomas first came across, mm -hmm. um, I was involved with the, the training of the, the UFL-based ASCAL players, mm -hmm. and Thomas believes very strongly that if you're good enough, if you're playing for your club, then you deserve a chance. Yeah. I think you've seen with his his policy that he has a he has a strong way he wants the Ascals to play. He wants the Ascals to play uh, a, a ball-based game, um, very organised. Um, the 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 changes you'll you'll see. The players are now given uh, a lot of data on the opponents. They're told to study. Mm -hmm. Um, their jobs and the younger players are hungry Amani, Sato um, they, they want to force their way into the Ascals and if they're good enough Thomas will give them a chance yeah. that's all you can ask as a, as a player so I think you'll see an exciting young Ascal team um, you know there's players who've done very well for the Ascals over the years maybe starting to come was the end of their careers? Yeah, I think you know if if we take by average the, our seniors, the more mm. cap players and mm. and the new ones, I think we have an average age of maybe twenty to twenty three. And that's yeah. exciting. Yeah, that's you know the young. the experience the boys get now will say hopefully they'll they'll reach the the final and that they'll go to Australia. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, we're all praying for Especially that. with with Japan, Japan in their group if they go yeah. to Australia, that will be a real real interesting one for me having just spent 10 years in Japan mm -hmm. right before coming to the Philippines. So, but whatever happens because the Suzuki Cup is after that, and mm -hmm. um, you're getting young players with tournament experience. Yeah. That's a great thing, yeah. you know, yeah. to be on the bench, to be in the starting lineup, to be away on the training camps, big tournament yeah. for these young boys. Like I said before, and I'll repeat it again, it's, it's very good experience and they can only get better yeah. Yeah. with all this new influx of uh, the younger players. And these young players are not, how you say, like, remember when we, we had the three musketeers with us last week? The, uh, you know, when they got in, people the, against Malaysia, mm. When Kenjiro and Sato started yeah. and finished, first mm -hmm. 11, mm -hmm. you know, when they got in, people said, oh my God, these are young, very young teenagers yeah. and all that. But look at them, they gave a very good account of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Very good account of themselves. I think the other thing you'll see is Thomas has, Thomas and Bruno, and George, myself, to some extent, have done a lot of work going to UFL games watching the games, Absolutely. And seeing the, the players, not just from Loyola, Global, yeah. the bit, if you like, the big teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we've done is, is we've looked at the UFL as a whole. Mm -hmm. So you've got players like Nate, who's right. not in one of the top three yeah, teams. Yeah. You've got players from Archers, you've got Stallions. You've yeah. you know, really looked and seen who understands how to play the game, who plays the right way yeah. for the national team. And then they're giving an opportunity, yeah. you know. So you look at, um, I think Ruben Doctori is a great, yeah. a great, um, I don't think I'm telling stories to say that he maybe wasn't on everybody's list. Absolutely, yeah. But Thomas, yeah. Thomas saw immediately um, he had something special in the reading of his game. Okay, mm. people yeah. know he's quick. Yeah. Yes. But he reads the game well. And so he, and he, the way he played in the league, he deserved the opportunity yeah. to be involved with the national team. And he's flying. Yes. He's absolutely flying. He is. You know, and I think that's one of the differences that I think you'll find with Thomas now is, yes, the European players are still maybe a core, mm -hmm. but if you're playing every week in the UFL 
and you're playing well, and you're showing that you understand football, you'll be given an opportunity. Yeah. And that's a big change from my understanding. I mean, I, I knew the previous regime a little bit, but obviously I've been heavily regime, involved. Regime, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been heavily involved with this one. Right. Um, and so I'm, I'm far more clear on, you know, just how the, the thinking goes. And it is about, you know, yeah. no, there's no, no door shut on any player. If you're yeah. playing well, and you're showing that you can fit Which in. Which should be. Which yeah. should be. Yeah, definitely. Yes. It's, it's, it takes exciting times for players in the United Football League right yeah. now. Everybody's pushing a little bit harder because they know people are watching. It's not, it's not like decades ago. Not in, well, I won't even say decades. Right. Yeah? I mean, during Dan's time, it hasn't even been 10 years yet. But no, not even. But before, it would always be just a few mm. teams because you don't even see them, actually. Right. Because it's far and gone in between the tournaments that we have here. Right. And poor coach, any coach that handles any of the Philippine sides before, mm. didn't really have that luxury, you know? Mm. And there were a little politics coming in. But now, this is the way it's supposed to be done. I was telling Thomas Er, even before we had him in the show, I said, you're having it a good, you're having a good thing now because with the UFL, you can see a lot of players yeah. strutting their wares. Uh, not like in the past uh, coaching staffs that you hardly can even get any in. And if you are in the coaching staff that, uh, from a certain club, mm. you will see definitely a lot of players from that club in the yeah. national team. Uh, you don't get the cohesiveness that you would want to. Mm. Plus, number one, like we talked about earlier downstairs, is the attitude, which Thomas and you guys, uh, George and Bruno and all that, are bringing to the, the new Ascos, I would say. right? Mm. This is the way a national side should be composed of. Right. Not just the players, but the staff. Yeah. If you have the right staff, sorry, Michael, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it is, that's, that's, that's the way. I mean, now, I mean, as an outsider, as a football enthusiast, as a coach myself, mm. I don't even really, how do you say, criticize that much. Because mm -hmm. there's nothing to criticize about. Speaking about cohesiveness, though, do you think they had enough time to prepare? I mean, I still, you know, obviously Coach Thomas Dooley would have wanted more time yeah. to, have, to have done it, but do you feel as if being as, you know, your affiliation with the, with the camp, you understand uh, the development and how they're progressing, do you feel as if it's, been, it's enough? Do you think they're going to be, they're going to get there in the Challenge Cup? Well, obviously, I'm very hopeful that they'll... Yeah, that I they'll, all are. I mean, the potential is definitely there. Yeah. Um, you know, the Philippines have, uh, under Coach Weiss, the, the, the Philippines have progressed. I think, yeah. you know, credit where, credit where it's due. Yeah. Um, there is, you know, Thomas has brought, I think it's fair to say, the next level yeah. of professionalism to the national team. Um, so now it's a case of maximizing the potential. I do know that some of the players haven't had that long. You know, they've, they've only just... Timing is unfortunate, you know, Ceres, which have a couple of key players, mm -hmm. yeah. Carly and Patrick, etc. They had a tournament which again was good for Filipino football. Yes. Right. They only just missed out, yeah. which yeah. would have been great to see them progress to the next round. Um, those players arrived a little bit late. They've had other players from Europe arriving yeah. late. So it's, it's, but that's national team, you know. Yeah. There, there is always going to be issues with I expect every national team coach will always tell you, yeah. <laughs> not enough time, right. not enough time. But you know what? The last report posted is Thomas and Dan were upbeat about their chances yeah. because uh, I think they did pretty well in the camp yeah. in was it Bahrain. Yeah. They did pretty well. I think Thomas was satisfied, Dan was satisfied. Yeah. The, of course, the only thing was, which Thomas also told me even before in, in, back in Cebu, mm. before the match against Malaysia, uh, you know, Philippines, Malaysia is becoming Pacquiao Marquez. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you were saying about that exactly what Lee was just saying earlier that, uh, like, he doesn't even know when Chiraki, Neil, right. uh, Dennis, and all the rest are coming over. Yeah. A few days, that's what you're saying. But I, I told him what I told him, what, what I saw when, since before he came to the Philippines, was I was telling him, you know, how much these guys have gelled already with the with the present crop of Ascos players, I think they would know it's maybe how you, how you bring it out to them on how to play together mm. uh, of, on your tactics, you know, what you're going to do with it. 
But I said, <laughs> I challenged him, I said, well, that's why you're here, man. Let's see how, <laughs> what you're going to do about it, you know? It is, it's a bit of an interesting predicament that he's going to have to face against Afghanistan. No Phil Young husband, no Robert Gere yeah. for the first game, um, and it's up against the South Asian champions, so it's going to be a difficult one. Do you, you, who do you think is going to be re replacing them in the lineup? Obviously, Rob Gere, fixture in the middle. And then you've got Phil Young Husband who will play um, usually just off the top, but no uh, Javier Patino as well in the lineup. Yeah. So it becomes a little interesting. I, I think you, well, I already know, so <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep my mouth. Well, this but, is, doesn't come but, out until Thursday. Worry, because it's gonna come out after the game, so you can see it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think what you'll see is that Thomas, Thomas is a brave coach and he, he really does look at the players that are on form. So the players that have produced in the training camp, mm -hmm. the players that have done well and understand what he wants the Ascals to achieve, will get an opportunity to show that they can play against a good team like Afghanistan. And, um, you know, for Thomas, the next, the next few games, the next three games are, are the proving ground. Yeah. You know, it, it's, you know, you mentioned my rough start in my life as head coach in the in the UFL you know you ha you have there's a time when you have to be brave um, I, I I was lucky when I when I met Pep and he he also mentioned this in his book that it's, it's very important that you stick to your beliefs and you know I hope no matter what happens against Afghanistan tonight Thomas is going the right way for the big picture of the Ascals and he shouldn't be judged purely on one game or even three games. Sorry. I can promise you, having been involved, that he is moving this country's football forwards. And it's a process. And we're going against, I say we, but you know, the, the Ascals are going against teams that have spent a long time together. Yeah. And this, this is a big change, but it's the right change. And you, you will see the way, that the, the way that the team plays with the tempo, the ball possession, the understanding of their roles. These kids, and a lot of them are kids, are being educated for yeah. the future. Amani, Sato, players like this, they could be Ascals for the next 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. And that idea is yeah, incredible. You know, that, when you think about that, you think about you know, the, the future of this national team is, is really exciting. So, you know, I hope we don't get, it's very easy in football to get carried away by one result. Yeah. You know, if, if we win tonight, which we all hope we do, yeah. it, you know, beating Afghanistan, big strong team, yeah. it'd be easy to say, oh, well, it's yeah, in the yeah, bag, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. uh, bring on the next team. If we lose tonight, then, you know, we need to look at the performance and say, you know, why did we lose? And how can we change it? And what were the positives? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and take it from there and not, sort of panic and think. You know what, 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 what's, what is good is perfect. The scheduling of the Ascals with Thomas, of course with Dan's help, mm. with the friendlies that we've had. Mm. Because Thomas was able to use a lot with his back line. Mm. He was able to experiment and put different yeah. players. Anton yeah. has come back to play in the middle. Yeah. Of course he made a boo-boo one time. <laughs> but you know, but that's, those are the things that you have to go through as a coach. Mm. Especially when you can't say for the people there watching and who are going to be supporting, hopefully you support Tascals tonight, 11.30. Oh, no, no, that's Tuesday. Sorry, we're showing up Thursday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. You've already seen it. <laughs> You've seen Good it job. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge like what Lee, Coach Lee here just said earlier because uh, I think uh, the Ascals have done a lot more, of course, under the tutelage of Coach Thomas Dooley, Bruno, Lee here, and Jorge, that they, nobody has ever expected. And we're on track with what Dan was planning years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and what, of course, Michael Weiss also helped out here because yeah. we only started the Suzuki Cup and all that. And it was already envisioned years back is we go to the Challenge Cup. Now that we are in the Challenge Cup, the next step is the Asian. Yeah. So, you know, we're on the right track. You gotta lose some to win some. 
you know, it, it's like what they ever, what, what did the astronaut say? One step backwards and one giant leap or what have you. <laughs> he just made, Two steps back. He's making that up completely. <laughs> hey, but they're going to believe it. Anyway, I know you weren't even born yet, Ronya. Anyway, what I'm saying is we are on the right track. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised though that Afghanistan is considered the strongest team in the group. Right. I'm really surprised because They've come from nowhere, man. From from war to nation. <laughs> yeah, they pushed team, hard, right? yeah. Uh, if Afghanistan can do it, and they did, I think, really rushed it. Uh, Philippines, you know, we're in a how do you say, we're on a phase that's moving up. So, right. be patient. Uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Mm. There's no other way. There's no other way. Yeah, and, and and it's getting entertaining as well. You know, before it was you were chasing results all the time. Now we're mm. actually going to get a chance to really be entertained and not just have our hearts in our mouths the entire and, time? And for me, personally, as a coach and as a football enthusiast, as an Ascals fan, the other countries before, you know, when they play the Philippines, they'll always put their second or even third keeper on. They'll maybe use five of their bench players right. against Philippines and they still get big results. Now, Doesn't the happen. syndicate, I'm sorry, you got to bet somewhere else now. <laughs> because before, they would always bet against the Philippines, we'll lose by 7, 5, <laughs> nil, 8, nil, it's not gonna even double digits. Now, the, the odds are different now, you see? Yeah. Right. So the, <laughs> the syndicates, what did I bring in? <laughs> the betting now will be very different because that alone will tell you already that something's happening yeah. to Philippine football. Um, the, the saying, by the way, is uh, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But uh, well, you, you googled that, right? No, no, I did. I did. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Um, let's talk uh, international football. Um, the, the seasons are just wrapping up right mm. now. Um, in uh, in Britain or in England, the, the FA Cup final wrapped up. Uh, Arsenal ending a, a nine-year drought without a trophy. Arsene Wenger is, uh, has recently re-signed for another three years and he's picked up a trophy. It's been a, it's been a long wait. It's been nine years of enjoyment for myself as a Manchester United fan and rubbing it in <laughs> to my friends. And he's the longest Arsenal now, fans. no? I mean, with the retirement of uh, yeah. Sir Alex, yeah. he's the longest right now. Longest serving In the coach. Premier League, right? That's yeah. right. And it's about time he won another trophy. I'm happy for the Arsenal fans. It's been uh, quite some time. It must have been painful watching Manchester City pick up trophies. Um, while the drought was uh, on hand, are you, are you, what, what team do you support in, uh, in Britain? Well, I've spent a lot of time working with Manchester United. Really? So, um, I know the coaches very well, we're good friends, so. But also, recently I was with Arsenal, uh, with Wenger, when they were in Japan, mm -hmm. so. Um, I, have, I have a little affinity to both. Right. I know the Manchester United coaches very well though, so. You know, it's certainly. I always look for their result. Mm. It's been they've had an interesting, an interesting season. It's been uh, depressing. Uh, well, <laughs> a little bit. You know what I've noticed this year? Premier League, a Liga, mm. up to the last. Yeah, it's been exciting. Two or three teams are still, you know. Yeah. Except for the Bundesliga, they wrapped it up with like I, 10 I know Lee doesn't want that to happen in the EFL. Right, yeah. I mean, you got the teams going out. I, ah. I, I, don't, I, don't think, I would think, I don't know, huh? I would think that Lee would want the, his club to be just there and nobody else to catch him. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's, I think that's a fair comment. <laughs> um, right, so Manchester City wrapped up the title as well in England. Well done to them. Liverpool just falling short in La Liga. Um, uh, the first time in a long time that oh, it hasn't yeah. been either Real Madrid or Barcelona, Atletico Madrid yeah, picking up the, the, the title and they, they did it by drawing against They were Barcelona. never under the radar before the season started this year, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Really no, no, nobody. nobody, nobody. They were still talking about Real Madrid, yeah. Barcelona and all, right? Uh, especially when you're talking about spending $100 million to bring in Gareth Bale yeah. to, to Real Madrid. Yeah. So obviously the spotlight was on yeah. them, but Atletico Madrid in the final of the UEFA Champions League and won La Liga, so I think Simone, great season. He's done, he's done an amazing job. Yeah. You know, he's, in my opinion, what he's done is he's crafted a team rather than a series of individuals. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's, that's produced for him. And that's wonderful, you know, I think. To have, they've got a good record, actually, though, against Barcelona in, in the new Camp. They, they've done well right. against them this season. So it was it's maybe... The last game, right? It was in New Camp and, and <laughs> I mean, for a team, a giant team like Barca, ah. to... to get a draw in the last minute, yeah. right. that 
was a big stab in the <laughs> bars of all the bars of France. I mean, <laughs> you'd always think yeah, home games would always be a big, big advantage. And they were going that way already until the last minute, boom, yeah. draw. Yeah. They lost two points there. Eh, well, that's what they say. That's all they say. The ball's round. Quick question. UEFA yeah. Champions League final. Real Madrid versus Atletico Madrid. Who do you got winning? I would like to see Atletico do the double just because I think it's a team. Yeah. But. Yeah. You think Real Real's gonna Real's take got it? more experience in. Right. Yeah. You, obviously, you're a Real Madrid fan no, over here, right? No, I'm not a fan no? of any of the clubs. I, I'd like Atletico to I'm, win. I'm a Crispa fan. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know that. That's, a, that's an old, old basketball club. Anyway, what I'm saying is, you know, me personally, I just love watching. Yeah. I like to watch Real Madrid games. I yeah. want to watch Barca, Man U games. Yeah. Those are the teams I want to watch. Ajax. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course, in the World Cup, Netherlands, of mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, that's my, how do you say? Uh, no matter what happens, I'm most for Netherlands. Right. Uh, but, the, the, the thing here is, what's surprising is when you are from a, let's say not in the top four mm. around the world club teams mm. and the coach does well, even before they reach the finals, some experts would say speculations of Simone going somewhere else <laughs> for a bigger contract and all yeah, that. Yeah. He hasn't said anything about where he's going to go. No. Or is, I don't think there's anything yet. Plus, also Suarez is uh, to go to Barca or, or, Real or, Madrid. or Real Madrid or even Manu. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for the team owners, after waiting for so long to get the championship, mm -hmm. what was that a fly-by-night thing for one year? Of course, fly-by-night meaning you win it, then you're going to lose it because you're going to lose your coaches, mm -hmm. you're going to lose your top players and all that. It's going to be a business then again. Right. Huh? So. It's going to be interesting to see now in the next few months where this is going to lead up to. Like, where Simone's going to go? Is yeah. he going to stay? Is Suarez staying? But do you, uh, think, you, but do you think Atletico wins it? The what? The, 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 the champions, champions? The final. Like, like Lee's saying, I mean, this will be the first time. They're still in euphoria stage that they mm. won. The Real, I think they've been preparing already for the yeah. champions. Way even before the La Liga finished. Yeah, I just wish I just wish Real don't win though because I have too many Real Madrid friends. Just, <laughs> just gonna rub it in. La decima, la decima for the next uh, decade. Oh, I don't know. But I think I think Simone, he's in a he's in a win win now. Yeah. Just to reach the Champions League final. Definitely. Puts him and he's won he's won La Liga. So I think there'll be a and his team will be confident because of the result against yeah. Barca. So. Right. Yeah, I think they'll be more dangerous now because what have they got to lose? They've, they've to most people, they've overachieved. Yeah, maybe, so. maybe to the club, maybe they thought we have a chance. But for most of us, for what's Atlet it? yeah, for Atletico to reach that, that just validates Simone's yeah. craft. And Real Madrid's got all this pressure hanging over them. Plus, no, no, no. Yeah, well, they but need to get something this year. No, well, I think the pressure will be more on, of course, Real because of their status, yeah. their reputation. Mm. But I would think that Atletico would 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 be in a, not you know what I say in the losing stage because situation actually because Real has been studying them now and Atletico hasn't been able to study Real anymore because they've been out of it for quite right. some time because they played the same day I think or one day before, uh, after each other right yeah they were the top teams that played the last uh, two games uh, Real had a chance not to watch now is. To watch Atletico now, it's how is Simone, you know, but he's brilliant. He's a yeah. brilliant coach. You can, you can, like what Lee said, he had, he made a team, not our, our superstars, because only who are the known players in Atletico? Well, they, they, they had their, their forward line is Costa, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean they're 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 world class players, but yeah. but I think what he, I still think personally, what he's done is he's taken a group of players, and he's created that. That mentality of you know they're never beaten, that they will work hard, and that they will look to to keep going no matter what. And you know it's it's done well. And it's and it's if you look at his tactics, it's not the same. It's you don't see it in any book. Just like what Pep did for Barcelona in the beginning, mm -hmm. the tiki-taka thing. Nobody ever heard of tiki-taka. Actually, the press 
used to work the guitar. But that, that's Pep's uh, style. And then now with Simone, he's, he's got different. Because if you look at the pictures that people have been posting, where well, Atletico, how they beat Real, how they played that. I mean, mm. they're a very defensive team. Mm. They were never in a rush. They were very disciplined, actually. I think, well, you know, rightfully so that they are, they are the champions now because you could see that I think they were the most disciplined team among the top four or five teams in the La Liga. I wish I, I wish I was been able to watch more of their games, actually. You know, you just always feel like, oh, yeah, they're up top, uh, but eventually they're going to wane, and it never happened. <laughs> it never happened. They, no, because actually, people will not really watch that. I mean, right. I mean, people from, not from Spain, yeah. those who don't really follow sure. them, oh, they'll watch Barca against Real, yeah, of course, yeah. but Atletico, yes, that's Real already, for sure. Oh, Barca. That does, because even, even I thought, actually, before I read what uh, Atletico has been doing lately, yeah. When they played Barca, I was having doubts. I didn't really stay up to watch it. I right, fell asleep. Right. Because if, if it was more interesting, I would have stayed up and watched it. <laughs> I just got shocked. That I think I was watching until when Barca was up 1-0. Mm. I said, oh, no, I need new camp, that's home. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I fell asleep. <laughs> Next day when I wake up, I see the reports. Hey, <laughs> it's a draw. Right. And in last minute, so, you know, it's not anymore like you, you can say that Atletico will be springing surprises. Mm -hmm. But in the Champions League, I think if they do beat Real, that would you consider springing on surprise. A lot of exciting right. things happening in football right now, especially if you're here in the Philippines. Like we said, Challenge Cup. Um, quite recently, we had the President's Cup. Mm -hmm. Fell short, Ceres. Um, scored a, uh, the, the opponent scored a goal yes. in like the fourth minute of added time. And that was the reason why they didn't move on to the yeah. next round. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of things to be happy about, a lot of the things to be excited about. And in just a little bit, we're going to get to know uh, Coach Lee Manson a little bit more. Uh, his background, the philosophy that in which he's put in global and what has made them so successful. And uh, yeah, maybe his future here in the Philippines and we're going to find out a little bit more about him. Uh, we're going to cut for um, a short break just to remind you guys how to subscribe to uh, the podcast to make sure that you have it on your on, on your iPhone, your iPod, or your Android phone. So we're going to cut for a short break. We'll be right back with Coach Lee Manson. Hi, guys. It's me, Tita K. Tita K. Come and hang out on Live Love Laws. Let's talk about makeup, beauty. Hi, Ganda. <laughs> Who's that? We can talk about ugly too. Not just kidding. And of course, Donya problems galore. Yeah, yeah. I'm special. Pake on fashion, shopping. Oh my god, shopping! I love shopping. Ah, food. We gotta talk about food. Anything and everything on cyberspace. Let's buy everything. We can talk about glamour and ubusan nang glamour. We fly Wednesday, six to seven p.m. Only on nmfnetwork.tv. Hi. They say nothing in this world is free, and for the most part, that's true. But here at NMF Network, all shows are indeed 100% free. And as an added feature, you have the option to subscribe to all your favorite programs, also at no charge. Why should you subscribe? By subscribing, you no longer have the hassle of delays when you stream the program. You also don't need to keep checking our site to see if your favorite programs are up because they'll automatically be uploaded to your device as soon as it's available. Here's how to do it. First, open iTunes. Your next step, hit the iTunes Store button. A search bar should open up as soon as you do that. Type New Media Factory in the search bar and all your shows should open. Pick the show you like or all the shows you like. And once that opens, hit the subscribe button. And that's it, you're in. All shows will now be automatically downloaded to your device. Oh, we're back. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> we're just talking about Bastard and Daddy. Um, all right, we got Global Head Coach Lee Manson on the program today. And I wanted to ask you about your journey with the team. Um, uh, you were involved with them in, in a smaller capacity mm. uh, in the season before that, and obviously it did not go the way that uh, Dan Palami had wanted. 
Um, a lot of star players on, on the global side, always considered a favorite, but sort of just fell in the final hurdles last season against Stallion, so did not win that competition in the UFL Cup. You guys lost out to Loyola Morocco Sparks, and then there was that big change with you coming on board in January, and uh, it, it's looked up. You know, you, you guys have uh, overtaken Loyola Morocco Sparks with five games remaining. Like I mentioned, you guys are on track to win the United Football League, reclaim it. Uh, that title that you guys won in 2012. And you're up by five points? Up, up by uh, seven, seven, seven points. Up. If they win the next three games, Too which, far to catch. Uh, three games, if they, then they will be crowned champions. These are games against uh, Philippine Army, Team Sakuru, and uh, Pachanga, mm -hmm. PLDT Home Fiber. Games that are all winnable for you guys, definitely. Um, how has the journey been for you? Yeah, it's been, it's been enjoyable. Um, I think... I think we have, if we're honest. I think we've we've gone quicker than we we expected. Dan, when he, you were quite right, I've to go back a little yeah. bit. Maybe I've been involved for the last two years, getting to know Fili uh, sort of Philippines football. Um, I was very lucky that Dan Dan gave me an opportunity with your under twenty threes to run a training camp. He liked. He liked what was being said by the players after we'd finished the training camp. Um, and that started my association with, with Dan Palami. Um, I've worked with the Ascals, I've worked with the under 23s. Um, I worked with the, the Leyte provincial team, the under 18 team, uh, Laos, Global. So I've seen a, a good overview of all levels within the country yeah. from youth through to the, the national team. So I think I was a little bit more prepared when Dan made the offer to, to take over Global. I think I was a little bit more, I knew a little bit more what I was coming into than most foreign coaches coming into the country. I'd, I'd known a little bit more about how the players think. Yeah. Um, so, but we've still, I wouldn't say we've overachieved because we've got a very good squad, but I think we've gone quicker than we expected because at the start of the season, I think it's fair to say the press had Loyola, firm favourites. They'd just won the UFL Cup. Um, they smashed us 4-0 in the first game. Yeah. And in fact, we were 1-0 down against Kaya in the second game. Yeah. So you can imagine how I was feeling on the bench <laughs> watching the... The opening, the opening part of my my work, but uh, we eventually overturned that game. We scored two goals against Kaya, got the win in the second game, and I think once we were four or five games in, I think the players started to believe in what I was trying to achieve with my with the coaching staff, with Jorge and with Diego. That you know we knew what Dan wanted. I think that's the first starting point. Dan Dan wants a team that will develop good footballers, that will play football in what we think is the right way um, and is attractive to the fans. He wants global fans to enjoy going to see their team play. So possess the ball, very attack-minded. Um, and I think, we, I think we managed to achieve that. And because we've We've insisted on a professionalism amongst the players with their, you know, we, we've introduced testing to the players regularly. We have specialist fitness coaches, um, you know, we're, we're always training with the ball. Um, we work very hard on set plays, on how we, how we play in formations, etc. And we make sure that there's a, a competition in places. Right. I think it's fair to say nobody in the squad has an automatic starting place. So again, that's that's produced a hunger in in the side. It's so, quite a squad that you guys have as well. Yeah, did, did you have any hand in, in signing up any of the players? If you did, how many of the players and who were the players that you had a hand in, in signing up for? Though? That's right. For, for people though, who are unaware, March was a very big... Yeah. Time for there you guys. There was a lot of uh, uh, departure movement. of Carly de Murga and the Angeles twins and Ben Storoso, who was then the captain. So there was a lot of movement there. Mm. Uh, tell us about your involvement in that. And yeah, well, in. obviously the decisions. The only player uh, <coughs> that um, I was reluctant to let go was was Carly. 
Um, I, I don't think it's a secret. I plan to build a club around Carly. Um, Ceres are a very ambitious club, mm -hmm. and they also wanted they also wanted Carly to to build a club around. And you know, ultimately, with the with the offers he chose to to go to Ceres, and you know, he knows I've still got a good relationship. I, I wish him all the best. To be to be honest with you. Um, it's football, as you know. You, if you lose a player, you have to move on. Yeah. So what we did was we've got good connections around the world, and so we brought in two Mexican players who were actually from the top division. And I think in Raúl, uh, our holding midfielder, we've actually got a player who is. I don't mean to be disrespectful to the to the foreigners in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. But Raul is actually still genuinely sought after by a lot of very big clubs. Um, he's not come here as a, a backward step. He's actually come here because he's playing first team football and he's, he thinks he's training and playing the right style of football. So he can, if he ever chooses to go back to Mexico, he can go straight back into that top division. Um, there's been some big clubs interested in how old is Raul Raul's right Raul 27 mid -play, okay so he uh, so he was a big he was basically Carly's replacement right. that player that we would look to to build round for Ben Ben did a fantastic job and you know he was a captain it was a big decision but Dan's philosophy is to develop young Filipino players and in Kurt Dizon, we have a young player who played the same position as Ben. Mm -hmm. And although he, he's slightly different from the way Ben plays, I had a choice between a foreigner and a young Filipino. And so I had to be brave. And I took the young Filipino instead because my job is partly to develop these players. So, you know, we released Ben um, so that we could, we could give Kurt playing time. And you know that decision has been has been vindicated. The twins, it was the same. The twins, it was actually. I've known the twins for two years, and if you look at our central midfield where they play, we had Raúl just come in, we had Jason De Jong, mm -hmm. we have Hoshide. I mean, that's a strong central midfield, and the twins need playing time. Yeah. So although I was not very popular <laughs> with a lot of people. Yeah. I felt for them, the best decision was to let them find a club where they will play. I mean, they, they did well. At the start of the season, I gave them game time. I think somebody told me I was the first coach to start them start both together, them. Yeah. Yeah. which surprised me. But, and they did well for us. But ultimately, my job is to get results for Global and to develop Filipino players. And I could have kept them and they would have spent a lot of time on the bench, bench yeah. they're not developing. So, you know, I let, I let them go more for their own benefit of playing rather than just hoarding players in the club, because yeah. I don't yeah. believe that's healthy. Um, and then, you know, we brought Sato in, um, and again, he's made a big impact in, in football uh, here in the Philippines. Did you know him from Japan at all? Yeah, he'd actually, he'd played against, um, when I was, I was leading a Nike elite team in a tournament and his professional team played against us. So, it, one thing I noticed about Daisuke Sato, it seems like he doesn't get phased at all. You know, he's a young guy, no. you throw him in against there, against Filipino Army. You wouldn't guy, notice his age at all. Yeah, right? While he's playing. And he's up against Ronel Henner, who's, you know, got a bit of a reputation for kicking out of people. And, no. and he, he took a few shots, he just took it, stood back up. Sometimes he'll smirk a little bit and he, he's back on the ball. He doesn't, he doesn't get phased. Sato has a great personality. He's the type of kid you want in the club. He's enthusiastic. He wants to play. Yeah. And I think that's, I think our whole team want to play football. All of them are keen. You know, my, my hardest job, and I'm sure Coach Hans is familiar with this, is the hardest job is to pick an 11. <laughs> yeah. Because I've got players on the bench that would start for most other teams. Absolutely. And that's why when we make substitutes, they're game changers. Against Loyola, we're losing 1-0. Yeah. We make the changes, and it's the substitutes that score the goal. Izu came on for three games as a substitute and scored in each of them. Yeah. That's the impact that we need 
from our players. Did you know the, the background of Izu? I know some of it. He was a youth, national youth player for some. Yeah. Oh. Uh, he never told me if he was a starter or not. Right. But should be able to say, <laughs> but I never got through that. Because mm. uh, Izu, I was his, Izu's first coach here. And I, I saw it. I wanted to get him to my university. No, no, no. Really, seriously, I was working on it. Baj and I were working on it together. But unfortunately, the papers that he had in the University of Baguio mm. couldn't cut it with uh, the La Salle right. University. But I was already saying, if I had Izu with me mm. in La Salle, that's already half my team. That's already half. I'll just leave him upstairs. Mm. <laughs> I'll let everyone do the job. Just give the freaking ball to Izu, give him a few plays, and he's going to do it. Uh, Izu, you know, well, he's, how old will he be now? 22, 23 years old, maybe, 24. Because when he got to the Philippines, he was, what, only 19, 18, 20, right. 19 years old. Is he only that age, 24? No, he's very, yes, he's young. He's he? Young 20s. Yeah. He's still in the young 20s, I think. He's about 20. The oldest he would be, maybe, would be 24. Really? Yeah. The wow. oldest he would be, no way. be 24. Izu, yeah. That's, that's, the, that's, a, that's the interesting thing about your squad as well. I mean, you've got Mark Hartman, you've got yeah. Jason De Jong, yeah. Kurt Dizon, Daisuke Sato. All of yeah. these guys are not even 25. Amani. Yeah. Amani Aguinaldo as well. Yeah. These guys are all yeah. uh, extremely... Yeah, well, that's what yeah. Leo was saying. Yeah. And these guys are experienced, but yeah. they're not even 25. You know, Leo was saying a while ago that Dan wanted the, a young team, young team that yeah. developed. And, I mean, it's like you say, right now, Lee, you've got a... A perfect combination now because right now you're ahead in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, one more, two more games, and you're gonna have left everybody behind. Yeah. You know, uh, like they say, eating your dust. But the team is still young. Yeah. yeah. I mean, young players. Jeffrey considering, Christians. Considering and Jeffrey is not even. Yeah, he'll, he'll come back when he comes back. Yeah. That's a well, shame that he was injured. Yeah, I think uh, again one of the things we would highlight is that we've had to be a little bit brave and trust the young players. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't want to make too much of an analogy with how Manchester United did with their young boys, but I spent eight years working with the Manchester United coaches, and to be perfectly honest with you, they left an impression, which is, and I mentioned it with Thomas earlier, if you think a player is good enough, then he deserves a chance. Right. Yep. And it's irrespective of his age. You could go the other way with Hoshi, Oshidi's actually come on the last few games. Yeah, he's been magnificent. And he's been absolutely magnificent. Yeah. He's changed yeah. the tempo of our midfield. So I, I don't look at a player's age. When we are training, we see how the player is on the week up to the game. We have an idea of a formation and an idea of a playing staff, but it can change depending on how a player is performing. And it, it depends on what the player brings to yeah. on the table. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Depends because not everybody's the same. No matter what you want to do with your system, being a good coach, one is how to put, you know, put one plus one together. I mean, if like you say, if you put the twins together, they play the same style, covering the center. But like like you were saying earlier, if you have Raul there, then when Shida comes in, it's going to be a different thing again. That's you know that's a good problem that you would have if you have a if you have a bench like what Lee has now right. uh, and putting the right time depending on the situation what's happening if you're back down or if you're up mm -hmm. you know that's it changes people don't know in football it's not like in basketball folks education again <laughs> uh, in basketball one player can make a difference okay the four will just be at the back pushing the ball to this one player in football it's 90 minutes no timeouts 15 minute break, uh, what can you do, okay? What can you do in 15 minutes? That's why you see a lot of football coaches were standing up the whole time, breaking their backs, standing up, shouting instructions, because that's the uniqueness of football, uh, not like other sports. And every situation is different in, in every match. Every match is different because if, let's like, say, Archers play global first round, that's the way the game's going to be played. In the next round, when you see each other again, that's going to be entirely different also because Lee could change his lineup, right. Archers could change our lineup or our tactics, same thing. Mm -hmm. So the situation changes, and you never know what happens. Injuries can happen, uh, whatever thing, any other situation, they always change. So 
to be a good coach is how to see that, identify that, and how you gonna, how are you going to counter that? So, having a bench like Lee has, I mean, I can only say a few teams in the UFL has got the luxury of, of, of having this. Of, of pulling on Misak Bahadur and when you know and you're down. Iso, by one Misak, I mean, coming from the bench, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have that. You can just go have eye closed. Misak, go. <laughs> Jeffrey, go. Yeah, I mean, it's easy, but. I know Lee's not gonna agree totally with that, what I just said, but it depends on the situation. When, what is lacking? Well, what, what, I would, what I would say is that the players work really, really hard in the training ground yeah. through the week. Um, we do have an element of come match day, every player knows um, where they are in set plays, defense, where they are set plays, attack. They know how we play. They know what we do when we don't have the ball and they know what we do when we do have the ball and so there is normally a limited amount of instructions that need to be given by me or by the coaching staff on match day because we work really really hard the players work really really hard yeah. during the week to prepare for the game we're very very thorough on the players watch previous games against the opponents we have we have those on video we have our own cameras at the ground we film the game so the players can can see what they did well, what they did poorly, and they can improve on that. And that's one of the things I think that we've done about that is we expect the players to prepare for the games. And part of my job as a coach, and Coach Hans will know this, is to step back and observe. Right. That was the difference with Mark Hartman. Is my understanding is he's always played midfield. Yeah. And I was looking at him and thinking, with all respect, he's got all the technical ability in the world. But he's not, to, in my, my mind, he was not a midfielder. He had such good technique. I want him to get a ball around the edge of the area. Mm. That's where he's dangerous. So I did, a, I did a little training drill and I put him um, in a zone up front. It was unbelievable. Every time he got the ball, he's smashing the ball on target. So that's why I moved him up front and has a bit of bad decision 21 goals 22 <laughs> oh, 22 isn't it? 22 goals yeah but that's that thing about coaching where you observe on the training ground right what your players are bringing what's their strengths what's their weaknesses and i'm you know coach hans will know that is that a good coach often just has to step back and observe that's why it was important for global to have a coaching staff right i think last season and i helped brian out a little bit but Last season, Brian was very much everything. Yeah. And so when would, he, when would he get the opportunity to step back? Right. But whereas, you know, I have Jorge, who's now the national team goalkeeping coach, but he's also my assistant coach. I have another assistant coach, Diego. I have a fitness coach. So there are times when I can step back and I can watch the players. How are they moving? What's the mentality? Right. Because from, for me as a coach, I start looking at my players the moment they arrive at the training ground. Who's in the middle of the group, very animated, very full of life? Are there any players on the fringes of the team? Are there any players whose heads are down before we started training? And right. if so, those are the players you need to go and speak to. You know, the injured players, it's important that you keep talking to them. You make sure that they're not forgotten. Yeah. You know, we've had young Nino out for a long, long time right. with a bad knee injury. And, you know, when he comes to the training ground, we make sure this time to talk to him, see how he's doing. You know, obviously our regular players, Jeffrey's coming back from a, a bad injury, a fractured a fracture on his foot. Um, he's now back in, in training. But all through his injury, you make sure that there's time to talk to him, to, to make sure that he knows he's not forgotten. Yeah. That, you know, yeah, this is perfect because what Lee has been saying is that's what I want to be. That's what I want to do every single match that I have. I always tell my players this, I said, look guys, aren't you sick and tired of me screaming at you yeah. during training, during match? <laughs> yeah. You know, I will do all the talking during the training. Perfect coaching would be, perfect game would be the head coach sitting back, relaxed, not saying too much. Yeah. Okay. I said, think about it. You know, I tell my players, think about that. If, if you do what was expected of you during match day, you won't hear too much. That's what you'll hear, praises, but you know, I've, I hold, handle young, young players. 
you hear praises. Don't you want to hear praises? Then curses? Mm. You know, I'm sick and tired of listening to myself say all these PUs and FUs and all what you can say. <laughs> and people can attest to that. Uh, <laughs> you know, but that, what, what I agree 110% with what, just, what Lee has just said. And I also do, and the other coaches, the young coaches, because I do the same thing as Lee does when they come in. I'm there, I'm sitting down, having my coffee, having my smokes, yeah. and here come players who are, you know, it, 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 it pisses me off when a certain time that the players are supposed to be on, on the turf, on the pitch. Yeah. Here comes people coming slowly when his teammates are already on the, you know, yeah. on the pitch, doing warming up or what have you. Because uh, I'm, I'm on a stage on actually developmental, right? Even co collegiate, I still call it developmental. Uh -huh. but I got, I'm, I'm proud to say I've got nine players who are playing in the UFL, the first and second divisions now, right. after the UAP break. Nine. So, it's education, it's a development. Some people don't understand. Players even don't understand what coaches have to go through. Mm -hmm. When, when you know, they, they, sometimes, you know, they, they're shocked why I will just burst out before training starts. I hate to see it because when I used to play, I'd get, I'd, I feel so ashamed if I'm late. I would even fight my mom. <laughs> you know, I'd go to the training, I'm going, my mom tells me to go to the grocery and buy. You know, I'd really get pissed off. Like, mom, come on, I have to be. I want to be earlier than the coach as a player. Okay? Even my assistant coaches will get it from me. Yeah. Oh man, they'll get it from me. <laughs> if I'm earlier and they come really late, yeah. without an old oh man here, if I'm calling or texting them, they see my number, they will not reply. <laughs> and I will say, where the fuck are you? They will not reply. They will not reply. They just tell me, coach, sorry, no more load. Ulul, mm. that's why yesterday I said, I don't give a shit anymore. You're getting paid, you have money. If I text you or call you, you freaking reply or you answer. And I'm not afraid to scold yeah. or lecture my coaches in front of the team. Because right. I tell them, you're supposed to be coaches? You don't want to be treated like kids? Don't act like kids. Act like a coach. Be a professional. You teach, you help me teach the kids, the players. So some guys don't understand that. Especially if they come with their moms, they think they come with their parents or whatever, that the coach will be a little bit softer. Oh, they're dead <laughs> wrong, man. I <laughs> pick them more. <laughs> yeah, I tell them, you think? You think just because your you know your dad or your mom, your Lola, your Lola is here. Yeah. You think I'm I'm I'll be here, the more, the more I'm going to scream at you, especially if you screw up, <laughs> you know? They don't understand that here. That's why, like, you remember we've been talking about this. It takes a while to educate the Filipino mm. about the sport. Now it's even harder for us coaches to teach not just the players, but the fans, the supporters themselves, what goes on. And they think it just goes on during matches because that's what they see. Right. They don't understand. Like, but the, the saying is, charity starts at home. <laughs> I can yeah. I can tell you a little. I'll tell you a little story just very quickly then about exactly that. Um. I cancelled all my social media because um, after we'd we'd beaten um, Army heavily. Uh -huh. I think it was nine one. Um, I was getting barrages of people saying that Global was an unsporting team <laughs> because at 5-0 mm. we should normally back off. Right, right. Um, with all respect to the football fans, what they're not realising is we are currently seven points ahead of Loyola and Kaya mm -hmm. with a game in hand over Loyola. But because of our goal difference, which is something like 30 above either of these two teams. Right. That's an extra point. Yeah. So although we're seven points in front, it's actually eight, because even if we manage to do what Liverpool did and <laughs> bottle it, yeah. um, we still have that because we've created a culture of winning. We won't stop at 4-0. We'll go, and it's not a disrespect to the opponents, yeah. it's because my players have a job to do for Global and the fans. So we're not going to stop at 5 nil and say, OK, we, well, we've won the game now, so yeah. we're going to go, and we're going to go for number six, and yeah. number seven, and number eight, because we want to create. You want Sato, or Armani, or Jeffrey, or any of the young Global players who are involved with the Ascals, you want them to be winners. Yeah. You want them 
to get into the habit of winning. And we're starting to create that at Global, and that's what you were, Coach Hans was saying there. The fan doesn't always appreciate yeah. what we are trying to do at the club. It's not about disrespecting the opponents yeah, by yeah. scoring nine against them. Yes. It's about creating a winning environment. It's about knowing our job, which is to bring the trophy to Global and its fans. That's our job. That's why I'm paid. That's why the players are paid. You know what? I'd like to say, I said this before, I don't know which episode, but for the football fans, you think you know a lot, you don't. Murdering, if you may say, massacring the other team. You know, this is a fair play, okay, the FIFA fair play thing. That's a, it's not only leading to a certain, I injure my opponent and I help him out. Or I'm playing the ball, I see somebody down, I kick the ball out. It's not just that. Fair play is playing the sport for the game for the merit of the game. Mm. Regardless of who you're playing against. Okay? This is what fair play is all about. So what Leo's saying, I can really I would say, uh, relate to that. Because even in the high school and in women's football, mm. I can hear parents complaining like that of a kind and I, I get I'm so pissed off even after <laughs> Winning 8, 12, 15, 16, 17 nil. Yeah. You know, I play FIFA football. What are you playing? For the Filipino fan, don't take it against the other team or the other coach that massacred your team by a lot, saying that this zone player, superstar, should have been already benched and let the other guys play. So the score should not be this, 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 this great. You know, uh, if I remember in the cup, there's a team of former well, football-loving players who are quite old. They were massacred. They were creamed. That's 33-0 by Loyola. And people were saying, you know, why, why would you do that? Yeah. Well, you know, it's because of the basketball culture, you know. Like, um, yeah, exactly. if you win a game 80 to 50, there's no merit to that. As, like, it's just the same as winning 85 to 80 mm. in basketball. But in football, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a reason for doing that. First of all, like they said, the willing, w winning mentality. But also it's because you need your goal difference. You know, mm. you want to you put that cushion there. So that's important. For, and the people need to understand that. Yeah. And I, I have to appreciate as well the, the level of expectations that you guys have instilled in global um sometimes like you said they'll be winning a game 8-1 9-1 they'll come back and they'll be disappointed that they let in a goal yeah. you know they'll mm -hmm. be they'll come back and they don't feel as if they just destroyed a team by nine goals and um i think that's what separated global from the other teams this season you guys just expected to play at a particular level and you guys are not happy until you reach you know, that level you know what's, what's funny is uh like patrick dato he's always been very competitive, even during scrimmages. Yeah. <laughs> even during when he was still still a kid with me in high school, mm. during shooting drills, right? And somebody scores against him, and they will just trash talk him. You know, you'll see he gets so pissed off. He hates it. <laughs> he as a keeper, as yeah. a keeper. Yeah. I said when I saw this when he was about fourteen years old, I said, "This is an attitude that, uh, especially goalkeepers, should have." Yeah. You know. Because what, what reminds me of is, what's his name? Was it not Zach Meyer. Who's this guy in Germany who was disowned, disassociated with the German... Uh, was it Zach Meyer before him? The one that gave a really bad foul against France, Fernandez, in the World Cup. Oh, um, yeah, I know. Uh, the, the German keeper. Yeah, yeah. You should watch his... his I, I, was, I had a chance to watch his, uh, some of his training sessions. Yeah. He is a madman. <laughs> he is a madman. He doesn't like losing. He doesn't like losing. Yeah. I, I was able to watch, uh, how do you say, a, a retirement game of, was it Litmanen? Yeah. I think it was Litmanen. Okay. And all his friends, the superstars, I think it was in the Helsinki Cup. And he was a keeper of one team, right? Uh. Half time, a girl, a kid, and an old guy uh. shot penalties with, uh, to him, right? This old guy with a fucking big tummy, bigger than mine, much bigger, okay, scored on him. Mm -hmm. And this guy just came forward to shake his hand. He freaking didn't want to. He was <laughs> pissed off. You know, like I said, he's a madman during training. He, he, he wants more, he wants more. Yeah. In Dayton, that's when I, what I saw in him, 
So I said, this guy, I can, you know, I can make something out of this guy, they right. And he, boom, he shut up. Like I said before, but there's no local Filipino keepers over six feet, except for data for the past, I don't know how many decades. Mm -hmm. And I should like this, some people don't understand, uh, especially the fans. Mm -hmm. uh, folks, just because your kid, your nephew, your niece, or your grandson, granddaughter, or close friend, whatever, playing, falls down, you think it's a foul raising the opponent, uh, things that we're talking about situations where in, uh, they get clobbered and still the players are still playing. I agree with Lee would say they want their global young players to be winners when they go to, for, to play international for the Ascals. Same with me. I want my young kids to go up and go and play in the EFL and one time play maybe for the Ascals again if they have the chance to and be a winner. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only way you're going to get it. Number one is attitude, guys. Number one is attitude. And like I said, understand this. This is part of fair play. Okay? If you don't understand what I'm talking about, Google it, <laughs> find out. <laughs> you know, it doesn't mean fair play, it doesn't only mean helping another player who's down. Yeah, we got that. <laughs> okay? No, no, no. I, I've, I've attended, like I said, I think I've attended the most coaching courses and I've been under four World Cup coaches in the, co uh, in the courses that I've attended in the past years. Right. And all of them, all the sessions, all the courses that I've been through, what I've taken is when they teach the coaches, us coaches, about fair play, this is it. You play for the merits of the game. Mm. So just because you're clobbering the other team doesn't mean you don't have fair play. You need, why will you come in and challenge another team and compete? Mm. Then you don't call it competition anymore. You, you know, and the fact is, in football, basketball doesn't have this. In basketball, when you're leading, like what uh, Jim was saying earlier, you're leading by 30 points, then you put your second team. Right. You let them give them a chance to play. You can do that. Football, how many substitutes do you have? How many substitutions do you have? Plus, there is this fact that Lee was saying earlier, to be a way ahead of the next team under you, it's a goal difference. Right? Yes. Three points for a win, two points for a draw, zero for a loss, right? One. It doesn't point, end there. One point for a draw. One point, what did I say? You can have two points two. for a draw. <laughs> I said two. I'm, my heart's pounding, I'm pissed off. <laughs> Three Settle for down. a win, one for a draw, zero for, for a loss. Yeah. It doesn't stop there. There's goal difference. You know how many things there are in beating a, 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 <coughs> excuse me, a, a draw? A lot. Same principle like in a semi-final match, quarter-final match, whatever. <coughs> there will always have to be a winner. Education again. Elimination group stage, draw is draw, one point. Quarterfinals, semifinals, round of 16, finals, anyway. You need an extension and you still need a penalty shootout. That's where the goals come in. Mm. To break a tie. So you need goals. Because in the league type, I think a few years ago, Global uh, yeah. No. Lost it because yeah. of goal difference by Global one. Global won. Oh, no, 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 no. Was it Loyola? Global won it um, by <coughs> goal difference over Kaya yeah. by one. In 2012. Just by one years. or at the most two, three goals. Yeah. That counts a lot. That's why don't take it against a club or a team. You know, you guys are bashing, but don't have to take out your social media. Go and fight it, man. I love that. Yeah, yeah so Global, I mean, I mean, no, we get it. I mean, Global, they, 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 ne they never take their their foot off the pedal or when no. they, whenever they're playing and and the fun thing about should be. football yeah. is uh, the fact that you only get three substitutions and it's not a free flowing thing mm -hmm. so when you do get these guys playing time especially in a squad like global where you're not assured of your playing time mm -hmm. you don't come in with a game five zero and you get put on in the field and you're just going to coast for the next 15 minutes no these guys are still trying to prove a point they're trying to prove that they deserve to be in that lineup so they're out there like hungry dogs you know they're going to go out there and play hard and when I was getting an opportunity to talk to some of your players, like Jason De Jong, mm. um, they seem to have this mentality that this is not where global is confined. In. It's not just the United Football League. You guys have ambitions to go out and represent in different competitions and possibly achieve that level of playing. It just doesn't stop in at the Champions certain League. Where, you, where you're playing. That's the nice thing about football. Yeah. Not in other sports. You play here, 
the next step is just the international or a national in football in all ages huh? boys and girls you go local school school you can go to uh, next step uh, district yeah. community whatever you go up and go up just like the World Cup what do you think the World Cup goes what the teams go through but is that something that you guys uh, talk about in, in your club that we have to be aspiring for something for a new level absolutely yeah I think in life I mean coach Hans was talking about the the attitude that you you want to develop as a as an individual yeah. and that's what we want to do with our players is we want to prepare them I know it sounds a little bit corny but we actually want to prepare them for life because you know you could have an injury or you, you know you move on or you retire or whatever but we want people to go away and, and be winners in their life we want people to exactly. to feel that no matter what challenge is thrown at you that you're go you're going to figure out a way to to change that yeah. and that's the same for the club I think we're slightly ahead of where we, we thought we were going to be um, you know I think we've been the most consistent well I know we've been the most consistent team um, in the first eight games and the second eight games we had exactly the same record right. um, scored more goals conceded less goals because we were more organized in the second period and so far in the third period is our strongest mm -hmm. to date yeah. um, the other teams have, have fortunately for us dipped a little bit because I think we do have a, a strong strong squad yeah. but that's not by accident you know we, we planned very early on um, <laughs> where we needed to fill in and the type of player we want and the type of player who who has the attitude of they're going to compete they're going to compete for their place Jason is the captain but he has to compete for his slot exactly. if he doesn't yes. deliver then there are other players who will get an opportunity and if they do deliver he's got to work his way back into the team Misag was a game changer when he came on for Loyola yeah. but he was actually ready the game before that and he didn't get on because he'd come back from an injury and there was other players who had been playing well while he was injured right so we've we've no longer got a starting 11 Sadia had a very poor game Paolo stepped in and did well Paolo came in against Kaya mm -hmm. and did very very well came in on the next game and did well and then he picked up a, an injury and let Sadia get back in That's right. yeah. and then Sadia just went up and up under George's Jorge's goalkeeping Sadia and Paolo have both so this intense competition so we give our players it's that attitude give the player an opportunity to perform and if he performs it's his place to lose and we've done that through the whole squad you know Mark has gone up as a striker and he's consistently now scoring goals and big goals yeah. I think in the past he was merely on maybe unfairly labeled as a, a guy that could score goals against small teams mm -hmm. That changed when he got the winner against Loyola for the 3 2 win. You know, he showed that, you know, that was probably the biggest game of the season for us up to that date. Yeah. And, you know, he stepped up and he showed that. And I think that's because we're giving all the players challenges. We say we, we speak to each player individually, and there's unhappy players at Global. I can imagine. In any because, team, I think. <laughs> you know, some players believe that, you know, they should be further up the pecking order than they are. But my job is, is to get results for this club, for the fans, for Dan. That's my job. Um, so it's about that attitude. Yeah. Not all the players, in my opinion, are hungry enough. Yeah. And they certainly can't complain about the results that you guys are getting. You know, the difference is the club football and school football, or a smaller le uh, level football. It's going to be a little bit harder for Lee in this position than mine. Because me, what I do is like, in I get a pool, like which I'm doing right now for yeah. my university. I have a pool. Uh -huh. Well, I've got a better number of pool players now mm. than the previous years. Uh, it'll all boil down to, at the end of the day, it'll all boil down to your attitude. If I have player A and player B to choose from, mm. same, let's say, same position, uh. okay, same responsibility, same. it'll all boil down to attitude. Of course, the attendance, but. 
attitude to me would be number one. Because if you think, even to say you're more senior than this other player, the place was, ah, I'm sure to be in, I can get in. No. You know, I will always choose player A who has a better attitude, mm -hmm. who's not as skillful as player B. Yeah. Player B can play for, a, let's say, local side or, you know, for any national competition. Mm -hmm. Player A, not so well. I would always choose player A. Because the better attitude is easier to teach. Right. Than somebody who, who thinks he knows everything or she knows everything. Uh, this, every year, I stress. Mm. Every freaking year for the past 33 years, I stress this point to all my teams. And that's why I get so pissed off with the Green Archers when there are some players that think, you know, because they're getting paid already and all that. Since I'm the technical director, mm. and I do get pissed off also at the coaching staff, if I see something different, right? Uh, they don't want to listen, I just tell them, well, I'm more experienced than all of you combined together, so please listen to me. <laughs> and I see this. Yeah. That's the advantage that I have because I've been in the youth, like I handled the youth for the past how many decades. Uh, my teams are mostly, most of the youngest teams, like in the UAT, they're the, quite younger than most of the other teams. Yeah. And if a player goes, you know, let's say he plays for me three years, which I've done actually, and I've, every year I tell this, I had one year that I kicked out, and I do mean kicked out, five very strong players, all mm. first 11 players, all recruits, mm. all under scholarships. Poor attitude. And one, and one foreigner, uh, Venezuela, uh, Venezuelan. Mm. I came all at the same time from one team, and we, I perf my team performed better the next year. Yeah. Uh, two of them came up to me saying that, well, they didn't even come to me, they just didn't have the freaking nerve to talk to me straight, they just texted me saying, I want to play. I said, that's your problem, you see? What coach is my problem? You said, I want to play. Mm -hmm. What was he supposed to say? Huh? <laughs> Give me a chance. <laughs> or something. <laughs> but I, which I did, I don't just kick out a certain player just once. Right. I warned them. One, not once, not twice. If I see no difference, then, you know, I always tell them. I don't, let's say, if I need a team of 20 players, I say the tournament needs 20, 25, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't need that. It only, you only need 11 to play anyway. Right. If I can do a team of 15, four substitutes, I'll work on that 15 to let them last that year, that yeah. season. A, Take care of the injuries or what have you, and do that. If there's any, you need to teach a lesson to some of these young ones. If there's anything that you take away from this podcast, it's your attitude, right? If you're gonna play football for any of the, the top coaches in, in, in the Philippines, and you know, it's not about, just about your talent, and just not yeah, about your skill. Yeah. A lot of it has to do with you know, your mindset. And how oh, you, 100%, yeah. how you deal with the issues that are put at, put at you, I mean, I guess a lot of people will look at professional sports people and feel they have no no problems, no issues. Yeah. They, you know, you get paid to play football. Right. But these these players every day they're confronted with challenges every day, and it's how they it's how they manage to deal with those cha challenges. That's the real secret. The really successful ones can meet the challenges right. they're given whether it's on the training pitch, whether it's a drill, whether it's an explanation, whether it's, you know, how the, how the team trains, how the coach. One of the things that comes from Coach Hans, I think, is you've really got to know your players. I think that's the secret of really good coaching, is you have got to, you've got to be a good man manager. You've right. got to know which players need the kick up the backside, which players need the arm around the shoulder, and again, that's something you need to teach your player. Not all, the players all need little different things, so you don't treat every single player exactly the same. But at the end of the day, what you need is you need to you need to make sure that you are fair and the team is cohesive, but that you know the best way to get. And that's something that, again, I think is one of personally my strongest areas is. I'm good at reading the players, so I know what each of my players needs. And although they're not all happy with me, because, as I said, some feel they should start. Well, <laughs> you know, but I think I, I think I know the best way to motivate each of the individuals 
so that the team performs. Because it's about the team. Yeah. And that's what Coach Hans was saying when he was saying about the player saying, I want to play. It's about the team. It's not about the individual. The individual is only one part. It's about how the team does. If, this, if Global wins this championship, everybody in the squad is a winner. Yeah. Yeah. And After the kit man. Everybody, driver. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The backroom staff yeah. who, you know, they, they arrive with a kit, the water, yeah. you know, they're picking up coal. Everybody connected with the yeah. club is a winner. Yeah. And that's, that's important that as, as a coach you know how best, not just to work with your players, but how you work with your coaches. You know, I like to give my coaching staff responsibility. So, you know, I know that, well, I mean, George and I have worked together for eight years, so I know what he'll give me. But... I know with my coaches, for instance, that I can ask Diego to take the, maybe the technical part where we're just maybe doing the passing drills. I can ask Coach Modell to take the players for the dynamic warm-up. And I don't have, I, that's the part where I can step back and I can look at my players' body language. I can look at, you know, how my players are interacting, how hard they're working. So it's those little things. Yeah. When we have trialists, we've currently got three trialists at the club. So again, I can watch those players and see the little things that, in my mind, are really important. You know, so. Exactly, it's, it's, it's actually the little things, a lot of people don't understand in sports, is the little things are the biggest yeah. factors. 100%, yeah. 100%. Uh, they don't see that. I mean, if I see a player, even in my women's team or girls, I will never hold back and call them a bitch straight in their faces. <laughs> the way they treat the other players, like if they feel uh -huh. like they're senior, you know, don't worry. <laughs> you know, uh, they, they, the way they treat the other, especially, especially if they treat the new players, the young, the young, the rookies and all that, uh -huh. feeling like, you know, you, that one, I would know why they think that way because they live a sheltered life, filthy rich families. That's why I was telling you earlier, Yeah, I will choose that player who is a spoiled brat and I'm going to put him and her down, down back to earth, plant both feet on the ground mm -hmm. and you're going to be my freaking slave <laughs> till, the time, <laughs> till the time you are actually, I would say, smart enough, yeah. intelligent enough to understand uh, yeah. this is a team, this <laughs> is football and this is coach hands, you're going to follow, toe the line or else you can always ship out. <laughs> you, know, you know you know what they say about a rotten apple uh, yeah. in a basket? What would you do if this happened to me last year when Brother Bernie, the president of the, of, of, of the school and yeah. vice chancellor of the university was saying, Coach Hans, you? Because I'm called the champion of the brain game. Okay. I can play psychological games with you yeah. to get max, maximum output. Mm. But I said, bro, I can take care of one rotten apple in a basket. What do you do if half the basket's rotten? I've never had that, I've never had that uh, uh, situation before. Mm. So last day of the season, after the game, I already told some players, it's going to be your last. Sorry. You haven't performed. I gave you all the chances. And again, a junior, three years with me. Mm. You know, just like I told you, the five players I kicked out on their fifth year, on their third year. Wow. I, you know, and I'm to revamp the team. Although I know I'm going over the budget, mm. but I still have to, you know what they say, be solid and think of nothing. Okay, I get a memo from my superiors. Okay, but I'm just going, I want a winning team. So if you don't have the right attitude, ship out. Mm. Right, maybe before we get to the 12th man, we're running out of time now. Oh, we haven't uh, done the 12th man. <laughs> uh, on the podcast, I wanted to ask, um, you were brought in in January. What's the deal with Global? Uh, how long are you staying? Um, I'm sure Global will be announcing relatively soon. Mm -hmm. um, what I would say is that I've been involved with the Philippines for two years. And the, the people here are in my mind anyway, they're, 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 a special, they're a special people and I'm really enjoying my work here. Yeah. So um, if Dan at the end of the season uh, likes, likes the job I've done with the club, then I don't see any reason why we would be, would be making any changes. Well, if you, if you win that, that, that title, then <laughs> I guess we're going to be expecting a good announcement from uh, yeah. Dan Palami. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, so. Personally, it's been it's been a pleasure having you uh, in the United Football League. You know, um, it's been fun chatting with you after every match and seeing mm -hmm. how you've dealt with the adversity of, of a difficult start and, and, and pushing on and, and getting into a really good position to win this league for Global and. Yeah, hopefully it'll be uh, an announcement where we get to hang out more often then in the UFL. Absolutely. I, I mean, I feel the Philippines is at a really exciting point in Absolutely. football. Yeah. Because you've got people, Coach Hans and I, we were talking uh, earlier before the, before the show about the development. And the Philippines, I think, has reached a point with the national team and with the professional teams, with the universities, etc., where you're ready now to kick on to the next step. Mm -hmm. You're ready for the, the Filipino coaches to step up to the next challenge. Um, and there's a lot of work to be done. But I, I, think, I think you're ready for that. So I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm relatively new. Right. You know, I've been in and out for two years and I've only been living here for five months. But I really do feel that the enthusiasm is starting to, to pick up. You know, if we can get more fans involved with the club, mm. if we can support local coaches more, because I think that's an area where you have... I, I spend quite a lot of time going to youth games. Um, I was with Coach Hans on Saturday up at Alabang at an event, watching lots of youth teams um, playing, and I'm watching coaches. And there's areas where I think they've got the passion, They've got the commitment. It's it's a lack of it's a lack of the finer points. There's still coaches screaming at young kids. And if I can just pass on a little thing, I, hopefully coaches will be will be watching this. Yeah. At Manchester United, in the academy, so that it's pretty much as good as you get in the world. Yeah. They have a policy, especially with the young teams, where the coaches sit down at games because the message you're sending with your body language for the young player is important. So if I'm sitting down and I'm watching the players, I'm relaxed. If I'm standing up and I'm screaming at a player and he's nine or 10 years old, what's he gonna, and we saw that, I, I saw that with some of, um, a little sad to say, some of the global coaches that, you know, they get so wrapped up in the game that they forget that surely the first principle of youth football is to enjoy yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you enjoy yourself, you'll go and you'll do it again. The next tournament, you'll want to play. Yeah. And I think that's the next stage for the Philippines and it's something we want to do with the club is to really help the local coaches. Now, it's great bringing foreign coaches in, yeah. but the real future for the Philippines has got to be the local coaches. Yeah. Yeah. So they need as much help as possible. And that's something that I know, I'm sure there are other clubs, I know David at Kaya very well. Yeah. I know they're very active. Um, we're, we're also the same in as much as we're really gonna push to help the young Filipino coaches to, to have good habits on how to develop players in, in what we feel is the right way. Right. You know, not everybody will agree with that. Yeah. Well, coaches have. Now you know why I don't like coaching the young ones. Because <laughs> you can't shout at them. <laughs> yeah, because the parents can't be shot at them, man. That's why I stay with the, the older ball kids. No, really, really. I, I love watching these young ones. Yeah. I, I love it. I, I find them so cute. Yeah. Especially those who are enthusiastic. Those you can see at eight, nine years old that got an attitude. Yeah, yeah. Some that ants, some, you know, some, yeah. some clowns or whatever then some have real skills and all this. It's all nice to watch them, but for me to train them and coach them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, time for the, the 12th man, no? No more 12th man? Yeah, no. Okay, 13th, 11th. Um, there is, um, uh, the only quick, question quick, quick. that we got from Lee, for, okay. for, for Coach Lee is from Mags, again, uh -huh. Satao, uh, uh -huh. hello. Uh, she's asking, uh, what are your long-term plans for Global FC? I think our long-term plans would be to once the, once the UFL goes national, we would like Global to be in a situation where they're competing for the, the AFC right. Champions League. Yeah. Um, now that's not just connected with club football, it also depends on how the ASCALs do, because there's a, 
an AFC coefficient, say, but at the moment the Philippines is quite high. So if we had a national league, if we had a proper setup with qualified coaches, with youth academies, etc., etc., then you know I think there's no reason why we're not competing in a bigger arena. Right. And that would be fantastic Oof. to take global to yeah. Japan or Korea. Yeah. And I think that all the clubs in UFL should look towards that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, to, sorry, what was her name? Uh, Mags. Mags, well, that's where we would like to go, is we would like to take global to an AFC level. Oof. So that's exciting. That's, would be fun. Two or three year project, perhaps, to, yeah. to get those things in place. But you've got to, you've got to aim high. Right, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mags, thanks for the question. I want to say hello to Ivan, Gayares, uh, Ivy Nicanor as well, who have, have thrown in their support for the Ascals tonight. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're all behind the, the Philippine national team. Doesn't matter what club you support, Global, Kaya, Loyola, Morocco, Sparks, a stallion. Uh, we're all behind just one team yeah. for today and on Thursday, um, depending on when you're listening to this. But yeah, the Ascals in the Challenge Cup, we're all very excited. Um, pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, Pleasure to be here. Um, congratula- uh, congratulations on the on the turnaround in the season, and re- good luck for the, the the last five games. You don't have more games against Green Archers, right? Eh? No, 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 we're done. We're, done. <laughs> we're ready to beat you guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, so thanks a lot for uh, to everybody who's been watching the show, supporting the program throughout uh, the the many months that we've been doing this since October. I uh, appreciate all the support. Continue to download it on iTunes and on the Play Store if you're an Android user. Uh, for Coach Hans. Uh, and myself we appreciate all the support and we'll see you guys next week next week next week next week I'm not riding anywhere yeah, <laughs> he's not going anywhere uh, uh, our guest yeah but because of the Ascals game yeah. tonight oh, sorry Tuesday night yeah. Tuesday today <laughs> I'm not riding I'm supposed to be riding tonight ah. but I'm going to be staying home to wait for the Ascals match yeah, I'm, I'm checking it out so tonight sorry, today, guys. So for sure uh, hopefully that turns out well um, next week our guest you know when we know <laughs> See you guys. Thank you. The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the New Media Factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised.